You're watching Subliminal Hacking. My name is Dale Pearson. In this video, we're going to take a quick look at an OSINT tool called GitRob by Michael Henriksen. This is a great tool, whether you be offensive or defensive side of the house. Essentially, it's a command line tool that quickly and effectively searches uh, GitHub at the organizational level. Um, so where an organization has set up a GitHub repository for staff and other people to join to store you know, public and private code. This tool allows you to quickly and effectively search that for interesting information. So that could be passwords, encryption files, uh, you know, configuration documents or configurations in general uh, for applications or, or different things. So really you know, good tool to quickly and effectively analyze what's out there so you can better defend yourself. And obviously from an offensive side, potentially utilizing that information. So in this video, we'll show you how to do the install and kind of get it working. We're gonna use Kali Linux, just because some of the dependencies like Postgres are already there. So it's you know, quick and effective for us to use. Give you a quick look at kind of how it all fits together and what the interface looks like. I'm not gonna go into as much detail of actually what you can find. I'll leave that to you. And obviously we don't wanna share any particular information in the video. So I hope you find the video interesting. I've got lots of other tools at subliminalhacking.net in the open source intelligence gathering uh, recommendation list. So please check that out. I'm sure you'll find a tool of interest to you. So let's get started uh, with the install and configuration. Thanks for watching. Okay, as usual, just to make sure everything's up to date, um, and we're also gonna just be pasting in some commands and links which you can find on the blog post just to speed things up a little bit. And that's down in the details section. So the first thing you're gonna do is um, just install Postgres SQL and 9.1, just to make sure that the exact dependencies that GitRub requires is available. And we're also gonna make sure we cover off the Ruby dependency as well and put uh, Ruby version 1.9.1 on. So we'll just uh, go through that there. Obviously, depending on your internet connection will depend how long this piece takes. Okay, so Postgres is all good and ready. So let's take care of that, that Ruby dependency now. Okay, and that's all good. Let's just we'll be clearing our screen every now and then just to make sure we've got a nice, clean, easy uh, work service for you to see. Now we actually start the, the Postgres database service on the, on the box, so that's up and running. So we're gonna now log into, the data, uh, you know, into Postgres and create a database uh, and username. So the first thing we do is um, we're just gonna create a GitRob user account, obviously a nice complex password. Then we're gonna create uh, the GitRob database and give the GitRob user account permissions to do things there. So real simple, um, not much should go wrong there. Obviously remember that you have to remember the username and the password for later. Okay, now I'm just gonna use SVN to you know, clone the, the GitHub repository of um, GitRob. Just uh, nice and simple. So again, depending on your internet connection will depend on exactly how long this takes to pull down. There you go. I've actually got uh, a few internet connectivity issues today as well. So um, it's running well at the moment, touch wood. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so now we're just gonna change directory into the GitRob trunk directory. And from here is where we're gonna obviously do the install, make sure everything's up to date and do the configuration. So this is written in Ruby. So one of the first things we're gonna do is uh, update the, the bundler. Again, this shouldn't, this shouldn't take too long at all. Um, and then we're actually gonna do the GitRob install now this may take a while, um, so you may just you know, grab yourself a drink, whatever whilst this happens. So uh, what we'll do, obviously you'll see the install begins and we'll just kind of 
zip forward in time a little bit so this video isn't mega drawn out. Okay, so as you can see, install configuration, well, not, not the configuration yet, but the install is going, going well. Uh, and in a moment, uh, you know, we can proceed to the next steps. Okay, so one of the things we're gonna need here is we're gonna need the a GitHub API to be able to pull this down. So logged into your GitHub account already, go into the settings, go to applications, and I'm just gonna generate a new token. So you can use everything left as default, nothing special needs to happen there. Just create a description for your token. It doesn't have to be anything for specific. Uh, generate that token. Then you'll see, obviously, you've got your API token Obviously it's blurred out here so that people aren't reusing my token for nefarious purposes. Um, but simply copy that and then we're going to use that a bit later and, and paste it into the actual configuration um, for GitRob. Okay. It's important thing here, when you get prompted for yes or no, it is case sensitive. So make sure it's a lower case Y or you'll get booted out. Uh, you can leave these things as standard, so hostname and port a standard. The username will probably be GitRob if you're following through that we created earlier. And that's going to ask you for that password that you created. And again, the database name is GitRob. So all well, that's fine. Name to paste your API key in. Do that, press enter, then press enter again. Then the configuration file will be saved and you'll be good to go. Okay, so there's, as I said at the moment, current version of GitRob is focused on looking at the organizational level. So just for this example, we're going to take a look at uh, GitHub as an organization and see what we can see here. So as you can see, starts doing some lookups, collecting information about the organization and repositories associated with it. Uh, and obviously then the members that are associated with the organization as well and their repositories. So it's going to start collecting and, all, and pulling all that information down. Obviously, depending on the size of the organization will depend on how fast or slow this is. GitHub is a huge organization on GitHub with many, many repositories. So, you, you know, we're speeding this up, but it's going to take a while to pull down and kind of understand all the information. So we're speeding up a little bit here. And then the next phase you'll see is then it's going to actually start scanning and going through those repositories uh, individually, looking for this key pieces of information we're going to use for OSINT purposes. So you see, as it starts to process those repositories, as I mentioned before, it's looking for keywords, configuration files, SSH keys, all that sort of thing. And you can see as it goes through here, we're getting a few hits, so a few findings associated with some of the things in these specific repositories. Now, obviously, GitRob doesn't know if this is interesting information or not, um, but you know we do know that it's possibly something that's going to be worth having a look at. So, like I say, it's going to take a long time, hence speeding up here. And actually I run into a problem with internet connection and things kind of die a little bit, so uh, we end up cancelling it out. So, again, it depends on you know, the size of the organisation, how many pull requests you may do invite for your API. Um, so I just control C and exit this. Normally, when this finishes, uh, it would automatically create a little... Um, you know, web server for you to be able to access the findings. We're just going to do that manually, which you can do at any time here. Um, so we're just going to start that web service up so that we can look at the findings we have so far. Okay, so once it's up and running, basically just on our local host, um, we're going to you know connect into the database through the GUI. And then we can see what it is that uh, Git Rob has found as findings wise that we want to take a closer look at. Okay, so this is fairly intuitive. So it's going to be broken down by organizations. So depending on how many organizations you've been doing searching over the while in the database, you'll see it. You see the number of repositories, number of members, and how many findings, and obviously also when you created it. So we just click GitHub. And then it starts going into a bit more detail. So this is giving you information on all the findings, where they're located. And obviously there's pages and pages of this. Also specifically, it shows us the members associated with the organization and findings associated with their repositories as well. 
So this is a more, you know an easier view from my perspective. Uh, then we have the repositories themselves, and we can scroll down and see what findings are associated with repositories. But anyway, I prefer to look in the members section. So in this example, we'll just look at the GitHub section where it's over 107 findings. As you scroll down, you'll see the name of the repositories and description and on the far right hand side, whether there's findings or not. So again, we don't know what they are yet until we look a bit closer. So we click this one just as an example. We see there's two possible findings in here. And basically this one was triggered because it contains the word dump. So nothing in here of interest to us specifically, uh, but you get the general idea. This is how it works. And, you know, like with all things in OSINT, just have to take some time to, to go through it and see what you can find. So, hope this is helpful. Uh, try the tool out for yourself. You know, look at your own company's organisation on GitHub and see what information you can find. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the videos, please like it. Also, feel free to subscribe to the YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and obviously visit the webpage for more information at www.sullivanhacking.net.